so with that, uh, I'd like you to invite uh, Kevin Perry on the stage to talk to you about resolution independence in Cocoa. Thank you. Hello. As you can tell, I'm the intern in the in the AppKit group, and it's kind of obvious because I'm the only one actually wearing the T-shirt they gave us. Um, <laughs> but I will be talking to you about resolution independence. <laughs> and what it means for you and your applications in Cocoa. So really quick, what is resolution independence? Uh, when you draw in resolution independence in your programs, there isn't really a direct relationship between the size of your drawing that you're doing in your applications and the size is actually gonna be rendered to on the screen. And you've always drawn in units that are called points, um, which are resolution independent. And of course, screen coordinates are pixels. And with resolution independence, another way to define it is that one point will not uh, map to a pre-known number of pixels on the screen. So let's go over what exactly that means. And uh, with Coco, we've always had a resolution independent model. As you can see here in this diagram, there are three different uh, coordinate systems. First on the screen, uh, that is, of course is its own coordinate system re represented in pixels. The window coordinate system, which we also call the base coordinate system, um, is also represented in pixels. And the view inside the window has its own coordinate system, uh, which we also call the local coordinate system, which is represented in points. And we can say that Cocos has sort of a resolution independent model because on views, we're able to apply certain transformations to them, such as um, this view, we've just applied a uh, 1.5 x scale factor, or zoom factor to it. Um, and it's now no, no longer 450 by 600 points, but 300 by 400 points. And so there, we can kind of say there's not a direct mapping between points and pixels as there was before. But up until this point, Coco hasn't, in a um, uh, general sense, taken advantage of this model for drawing its uh, user interface elements. And you as developers, when you do your drawing in your applications, you could assume that you've got a one-to-one um, -one mapping of points to pixels and be generally safe. Um, however, you can no longer make that assumption because of the changes we're making to resolution independence. So to go over what problems we have with resolution independence, um, as technology advances and we have displays with higher pixel densities, um, we get additional quality, which is a good thing. Uh, however, take this example here, we've got a 72 DPI screen with a window that's 600 by 900 pixels, and it's drawn fine on the, on the 72 DPI just screen. However, without any modifications, we run that on a 144 DPI screen. And you can see that um, you basically have to squint to see anything in the, in the, in the view. So this isn't um, a desired effect at all. And our solution for this is to have Coco automatically apply a scaling factor uh, to the top level view and the entire view hierarchy inside your windows. Uh, so that it will be scaled to a comfortable size for your users. So in this example, whereas the screen, uh, the window in the 72 DPI screen was 600 by 900 pixels, it is, we apply a scale factor of 2.0 so that we resize the window to be 1200 by 1800 pixels. And you notice that the view is still inside 450 by 600 points. That's because points are resolution independent. And so we can scale the entire coordinate system without actually changing the coordinates within it. So just a quick overview, remember that you've got screen, screen frame units in pixels, window frame units also in pixels, and view frame and bounds units in resolution independent points. So when you do uh, computations of coordinates for custom layout or whatnot, you need to make sure that you're in the correct coordinate system. And NSView has always provided API for you to uh, convert between coordinate systems in different views and also to uh, the window space. And you can see here that we're converting a rectangle um, from view nil, 
which means that we're converti converting the rectangle from the window space, that's what the nil means, to the local space of the view. And here we're doing the opposite. We're converting the rectangle to the window space by passing nil as the second parameter there. And of course there is a similar API for points and sizes. Something you have been able to do before the advent of resolution independence is um, the following, where you want to compute the, the content rect for your window, and so you get the window frame, and just do a simple subtraction to, to, to find the, the rectangle that's um, in, for your content view. However, that obviously will not work when um, you've got a scale factor that's not 1.0, because you're going between uh, coordinate systems there. And so the correct thing to do is use the NS window API that's existed since 10.0 to do this for you. You just get the window frame and then pass it to uh, content rect for frame rect and that will automatically apply the, uh, uh, take, to, take into a, a, um, account the scale factor for you. And in Coco, it's always been optimal, of course, to draw on pixel boundaries. And that was easy when you could assume that one point was equal to one pixel because you could just, in a local coordinate system, um, align things to points. However, however if you have, for example, a, a non-integral scale factor now with resolution dependence, and you integralize all your point boundaries, then when it's converted up to the screen, you're gonna have non-integral pixel boundaries, which is going to cause um, certain effects in your drawing that are not desirable. So the correct thing to do is not use, for example, NS integral rect, floor, round, whatever, on pixel, or on, excuse me, point uh, values in the local coordinate system. Use the API that I just talked about to convert to window coordinates first. So here we've got a rectangle that we're first converting to window space. Then we can use NS integral rect and then convert back to view space so that we can draw it in our view. And there is a method on, on NS view called center scan rect, which we intend to make uh, handle the uh, basic case for you, the most common case. Um, and it, the methods work somewhat in the seed that you've got right now. It's not perfect, but we do intend to improve it for uh, Leopard release. But you, go, you can go ahead and experiment with, experiment with it now. This will do the conversion between coordinate systems and all that for you. All right, so let me see who is really proud of all their artwork in their Mac OS X applications. Okay, I'm sure there are a lot of you who, who like to boast about it, and it's really great because um, that's part of the, the Mac OS X user experience. Um, and we really pre appreciate all the effort you do to make those, high res those, those good looking images. But as I said before, with the scale factor applied to the entire view hierarchy, we're also resizing all of your images automatically. Um, so just imagine all, your, all of your beautiful artwork scaled up to say twice its normal size. Probably not a pretty picture in most cases. Um, and so this is something that Coco can't solve directly for you, but we uh, do make it pretty easy for you as developers, though it may not be quite so easy for your graphic designers. Um, so there's two possible solutions um, where possible. Try to switch to vector-based art that is obviously automatically gonna scale correctly to the, um, and look great at any scale factor. However, for bitmap images, if you need to use those, we suggest that you supply um, your bitmaps at one time and four times their normal um, resolution in a multi-representation TIFF, um, making sure to set the DPI appropriately so that they are actually drawn to the same size. And you can see it an introspected view of one of these images where we've got two um, image representations with the same size but um, the four times the size uh, for the second Im image representation. And when you do that, when you ask NS image to draw your image, it will automatically look at the scale factor and select the correct image representation and using the quality image interpolation that we have, uh, scale that down to the correct 
size and make sure that your images still look great at any scale factor. And as Chris Parker mentioned in the uh, previous talk, uh, we do intend to uh, publish several named images that will use high-res art for the most commonly used images, such as your, the add and remove plus and minus signs. Um, that's not in the seat at this point, and, but, but, but we do intend to put that into the Leopard release. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick Q&A, but this is gonna be kind of different because I'm gonna be asking all the questions and you get to listen to all the answers. So um, you can wait until later to ask all your questions. Um, so the first question is, how do I know what scale factor has been applied to my window? The answer is, well, you really shouldn't need to know this, um, but NS window does provide API for this in the user space scale factor method. And this might be useful in cases where you want to maybe save your uh, window frames to disk um, manually. So to, before you do this, you'll want to um, invert the scale factor done to the window so that in case the, win the window is read from disk in an uh, environment with a different scale factor, it can be reapplied when you read it and you don't get any explosions of window size or anything. Uh, but remember, this is not for use in converting between view and window coordinate systems. There are a lot of other uh, transformations that may be applied to your views that you just can't take into account with this. So use the API that we've provided on its view. It's really the simplest way to do this. Next question is, I have an off-screen view that shouldn't be scaled. How do I prevent automatic scaling? Um, well, in Tiger, we provided this uh, ability for you using the NS unscaled window mask when applied to the NS borderless window mask. Um, yes, that's right. You can only use this on borderless windows, um, but it's a pretty simple solution here. You just apply it and um, pass it in into the init method. Okay. Next question, I happen to know that OpenGL has to draw in pixels for it to be correct. Uh, how does that work in a scaled window? And the answer is uh, we're gonna make NS OpenGL view internally perform an inter inverse transform on the bounds of the view so that internally uh, the OpenGL view can draw um, directly to pixel values, and externally you, as you're using the, um, the view, it'll be just, it'll be normal. The frame is still in points. So uh, all this is handled, handled automatically for you. You don't really need to worry about this. Uh, but discuss that because for those of you who have resolution dependent views, you can do the same sort of um, transformation, though this shouldn't be very common. Last question, probably one of the most important. Uh, how do I test my application for resolution independence? We hope we all, you all do this, um, go and do this fairly quickly, because it's fairly easy. You just um, launch Quartz Debug, and you can find this window, the user, user interface resolution window, and choose, we suggest choosing 1.25, 1.5, and 2.0 as representative scale factors to see how your app will work in general with resolution independence and then relaunch your application and see how it works. So it's that simple. Okay, continuing with the common theme here, we're going to um, do resolution independence check for text edit. So let's get the demo machine, please. All right, thank you. So let's go ahead and set, let's say just 2.0 scale factor, we're gonna test this out. Launch text edit, boom. That, you know, that actually looks pretty good. Um, we haven't done any changes to this at all. We've got pretty much just standard Coco controls and, and um, Coco text, so there's really not any work that needs to be done to prepare uh, text edit for resolution independence. So no work done there, we really like that. Uh, however, for a more representative, representative view of this, we've prepared a little uh, bit of sample code here. We've got a beginning as of a Minesweeper game. Um, 
that uses custom layout with images and so forth to draw its minefield. So here we've got a typical minefield. You can resize it or make the uh, minefield larger, whatever. Just really simple. Um, but let's go ahead and run this at, say, 1.25 scale factor. Can't really see that there on the projector very well, but I've launched Pixie here to show you. Um, in between a lot of these images are these pixel-wide cracks. Um, and as I mentioned before, this happens when we're drawing on non-integral pixel values. So there's something wrong there with our drawing routines. And also when we try and re resize this minefield, the window isn't getting set to the correct size. So let's go and investigate what's going on there. Go ahead and open our view subclass here. Here we've got our draw rect, and we're calculating the size of the rectangle here that we're going to draw the image into. And here we're calling a method, which is just right up here. We, this is um, where we're integralizing the rect and everything. And you know what? We're doing this on, in view coordinates. We haven't done any sort of transformation here. So let's go ahead and insert the necessary method to convert first to window coordinates. And then we can integralize the rect in window coordinates. And then we convert back to view coordinates, because that's what we have to draw in. So that should fix the pixel crack problem. And down here, where we set the number of squares, so this is where we're resizing our window as well, uh, right here, we are computing the delta that we want to uh, resize our window by. And you know what? We're doing that in terms of ah, view coordinates. So that isn't uh, being set correctly with our scale factor. So we want to make sure that we convert um, the size first to window coordinates so that the window is resized correctly. And there's a little um, interesting behavior of the convert size to view method. If you just happen to have negative values, in your size, when you, when you pass it through convert size to view, it's normalized to a positive value. So we actually have to, um, before we convert it, um, we need to check whether the size is uh, negative, save that state, and then after we're, we're done converting it, we restore it. So that should handle the window resizing, and we'll just run this again. Again, we're still in 1.25 scale factor. And switch back over to Pixie here, and you see there's not any pixel cracks anymore. Um, we've solved that problem by making sure that we're drawing on pixel boundaries. And when we resize the minefield, it resizes it to the correct size of the window. So that looks pretty good for preparing this app for resolution dependence as well. And um, so it could be that simple for your applications as well. So let's switch over back to the slides, if we could.